Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating the coefficient of determination using Microsoft Excel. So I have here in this worksheet some fictitious data. I'm going to show you how to calculate the coefficient of determination uh, in a couple ways. The first way will be by squaring R, which represents correlation, and I have the formula for that here on the top right. And the second will be through using the built-in RSQ function in Excel. So let's take a look at this data. This fictitious data has a variable final exam for 20 participants and a variable GPA. And let's say this final exam was given uh, at the end of the completion of a program and it's believed to be related to GPA in some meaningful way, that is, uh, positively correlated in this case, and a coefficient of determination that would indicate that a fair percentage of the variance in one variable can be attributed to the other. So let's start by taking a look at the formula to calculate the correlation. And you can see it has two parts, a numerator and a denominator. And at, on the top part, numerator, we have the score minus the mean. And then we have, you know, for one set, for x, and then we have the score minus the mean for the other set. So, that, so in this case, x would be the final exam, and y would be the GPA, two variables. So you have the observation minus the mean, times the observation minus the mean, and that is all added together. Looking at the denominator, uh, you have the same thing. You have the observation minus the mean for one variable, except that's squared, and then they're added together, and then the observation minus the mean for the other variable squared added together. These two values are multiplied together, and then we take the square root of that, and that represents the denominator. And of course, r equals the numerator divided by the denominator. So let's start calculating these different components. Uh, first, we need the mean. In Excel, that's fairly straightforward. The function is average. And we want that to be for, in this case, x will be final exam. So I'll select b2 through b21. I'm going to go in here and click F4 to make these absolute. That's 46.75. I'm just going to autofill that all the way down to make the other calculations a little easier. So I can take this value, the mean value for final exam. I can just autofill it to the right and then move into the formula bar and just drag the selection over to GPA. We can see the average GPA for these 20 participants is 2.905. Again, I'm just going to autofill that down. The next calculation is to take the, ob the observed score and subtract the mean. Right? So in this case, it'll be uh, cell B2, and we'll subtract D2, which is 46.75. So we have negative 5.75 is that observation minus the mean, and we're going to autofill this all the way down. We'll do the same thing for GPA. So it'll be the GPA, which is C2, minus the mean for these 20 GPA scores, which is E2, C1.035, and autofill that all the way down. So you can see now I'm going to build uh, an important block here for the numerator. I'm going to do that by multiplying these two values together. So that's just equal sign, then x minus x bar, and then shift 8 is the asterisk, and then cell G2. So that's these two values multiplied together. And I'll autofill that all the way down. 
So before I go any further with calculations, you can see I have enough information to calculate the numerator, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. It's the sum of all these scores here. So I'll put an equal sign, sum, and then select this range. And now the numerator is complete, 34.655. Then I want to calculate two more variables here to help me complete the denominator. And you can see this is the observation minus the mean squared. I already have the observation minus the mean. So equal sign F2, it'll be shift 6, then 2. So that's raised to the power of 2, or squared. Autofill that. I'll do the same thing for Y. So I'll take G2, and again shift 6, raise to the power of 2, or square the value. Now I have all the values for y minus the mean of y squared. So I now have enough information to populate the denominator. So as you can see in the denominator, I'm going to need to start with the square root. So it'll be equal sign sqrt. And I'm going to want the sum of the values in column i here. So that'll be sum, and I'll select the values in column i. And I want to multiply that, shift 8, by the sum of the values in column j. And there we have the denominator. 74.86. So to calculate the correlation coefficient, r, it's straightforward. It would be the numerator divided by the denominator. So r equals 0.46. The coefficient of termination is r squared. So the equal sign, I'll select r. Shift 6 and then 2 to square that. And we have a coefficient of determination equal to 0.21. Now I think it's helpful to calculate the value of r and r squared using this method going through all these steps so it can be understood conceptually. It helps to go through these stages to understand concepts like this. However, if you already understand the concept, once you've learned it, you know how to calculate the value of r and r squared step by step, there are quicker ways to calculate the values. In Excel, you can calculate r using the C-O-R-R-E-L function. You just need to supply it with two arrays, and this, this case would be final exam. and GPA. Now of course to calculate R squared I could do the same thing here. I could square R, but there's also a function for the coefficient of termination for R squared and it's RSQ. So the RSQ and then it asks for known Y's and known X's. So this is how it refers to the parameters, but it does not matter what order you put these in. For example, this for this demonstration, GPA has been the Y value and final exam has been the X value. But if I select final exam for known Ys and the GPA for known Xs, I get the same coefficient of termination there, uh, 0.21. So just to show you, if I ran it the opposite way, known y's with the value I've been using as y and known x's does not affect uh, the outcome. So the way to interpret the coefficient of termination 
is to think of it as a percentage. So in this case, 0.214, let's say, is 21.4%. So that tells us, looking at our original variables, that 21.4% of the variance in the GPA scores can be explained by the final exam. And of course, the opposite is true as well. 21.4% of the final exam scores can be explained by the GPA. It's important to understand that both correlation and the coefficient of determination tell us something about the relationship between these two variables, but not in terms of causality. Uh, it doesn't say that uh, final exam score causes movement to GPA or the opposite is true. It just tells us something about the relationship, specifically the amount of variance in one variable that can be attributed to the other. I hope you found this video on calculating the coefficient of determination in Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.